Hi, this is John Ainsley, CTO at Doulos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Easier UVM, components and phases. I'm going to be looking at the code that's output from the Easier UVM code generator and particularly focusing on UVM components and explaining UVM phases. This will be of interest to you whether or not you have any particular interest in running the Easier UVM code generator yourselves. But of course, if you do plan on running the Easier UVM code generator, I'll also be giving you a little more insight into how that works. So let's take a look. The Easier UVM code generator starts from a set of control files. We have a set of so-called interface template files where each interface template corresponds to one agent and the interface that it's connected to. There's then a common template file that contains some common settings and a pin list file that describes how the pins of the design under test are connected to variables within interfaces. You then run the Easier UVM code generator using a command line similar to the one shown at the bottom here and the code generator generates a directory full of UVM source files that we can then simulate. And when you get into your simulator, you'll probably see a, a display in the graphical interface similar to this, which is showing the UVM component hierarchy. So at the top of the UVM component hierarchy, we have a component named UVM test top, that's a UVM test. The test instantiates a UVM env, which in turn instantiates a coverage component and an agent. And then finally, the agent instantiates sequencer driver and monitor. Let's take a look at the kinds of things generated by the Easier UVM code generator, because that's conceptually important, not only in understanding how the code generator works, but in understanding how UVM itself works. So the code generator generates a number of system Verilog modules and UVM classes that get instantiated as objects. In the module based world, we have a top level module. The top level module instantiates both the class based verification environment and a test harness module. And the test harness module will instantiate a number of system Verilog interfaces and the design under test. The design under test is instantiated below the test harness. It's not shown on this hierarchy diagram simply because this diagram is showing the code that comes from the code generator. And of course, the DUT files are not output directly from the code generator. As well as generating modules, we also have a number of system Verilog classes. And the classes you can see here in green are all UVM components. That is, what we have here are objects. Each object is created by instantiating a class, and each component class extends the UVM component base class. We'll see code examples in a few moments. UVM components are quasi-static in the sense that, like all objects, they're actually instantiated dynamically during system Verilog simulation, but components are instantiated at time zero in the build phase, as we'll see. But these aren't the only classes that are generated. The code generator also generates classes that represent UVM configuration objects. And those configuration objects will be stored in the UVM configuration database. In Easier UVM, the configuration objects are actually created and associated with components during the build phase quasi-statically, which is why they're shown in the same sort of color as the components. Although, strictly speaking, while components have to be instantiated during the build phase, configuration objects and the configuration database more generally can be used throughout later phases of simulation, although it's typically recommended that it's confined to the build phase. And then subsequently, after time zero, as the simulator runs, other classes come into play. So we have virtual sequences, which start sequences, which in turn start sequence items, otherwise known as transactions. So our sequence and transaction classes extend the base class UVM object. And these are all dynamic objects, truly dynamic objects. That is, they're created after time zero as simulation runs. 
So this slide effectively is giving you a map of the code created by the Easier UVM code generator. We've got module based code, including modules and system Verilog interfaces and class based code that splits into UVM components, configuration classes and classes that represent stimulus, that is virtual sequences, sequences and transactions. Let's discuss UVM execution phases in a little more detail. Phases are very important in UVM and they're one of the first features that you're going to see as you start dissecting the code from the easier UVM code generator. There's a number of predefined phases in UVM and we'll start with the so-called common phases. The common phases are going to be listed down the left hand side of this slide. The first common phase is the build phase, and it's during the build phase that the UVM component hierarchy gets instantiated top down. So we start with the top level component, which is the test. The test instantiates an env. An env may instantiate further envs nested within it until eventually we reach agents and indeed subscribers. So here we have one test that contains one env that contains a, scriber, a subscriber component for coverage collection and checking and an agent. And the agent in turn instantiates sequencer driver and monitor. And these blobs next to the bigger rectangles are representing ports and exports. I'll explain exactly what ports and exports are about in a later video. So this UVM component hierarchy is created at time zero during the build phase. And then also at time zero, the next phase is the connect phase. And during the connect phase, we make transaction level connections between the ports and exports that are used to connect together our UVM components. So without wishing to go into too much detail, here we can see a port on a driver connected to an export on a sequencer and a port on a monitor connected to a port on its parent component, which is the agent. Then the port on the agent is connected to an export on the subscriber. Then still at time zero, we have a couple of further housekeeping phases. During the end of elaboration phase, you would typically do checks that rely on the entire UVM component hierarchy having been instantiated. Then during the start of simulation phase, you might, for example, open some files. Then comes the run phase. The run phase is the only UVM common phase, the only phase listed in this column, which is represented by system Verilog tasks rather than system Verilog functions. Build, connect and so on are all represented by system Verilog functions that can't consume time. Run is represented by a system Verilog task, which can and does consume time. So it's only the run phase that consumes time. It's during the run phase that sequences execute, transactions are generated, processes execute, time passes. So what you normally think of as simulation happens during the run phase. And the run phase can be further subdivided into a number of so-called UVM runtime phases, these 12 names in this box in the centre. These UVM runtime phases are optional, but if you like, you can use them to synchronise the activities that occur within the UVM run phase. Then when simulation is notionally over, when we get to the end of simulation time, there's a number of other housekeeping phases that we can use for post-processing. So there's the extract phase, the check phase, the report phase, and the final phase. And although there's no particular constraints on what you do in these final housekeeping phases, the names of the phases are highly suggestive of what they're meant to be used for. So that's what UVM's phases look like in the abstract. Let's take a look at some of the code now that we will see coming from the code generator and see how these phases are represented in the UVM code. Well, it turns out that phases are tightly related to UVM components and corresponding to each of these execution phases, we're going to see so-called phase methods within any or all of these UVM components. So let's start out with the agent.
The agent component typically instantiates the sequencer, driver and monitor, and it typically has an analysis port, which is used to send out transactions to the rest of the verification environment for doing things like checking and coverage analysis. So here we can see the class that comes from the Easy UVM code generator that represents the agent. I'm focusing on the Easier UVM code generator in this particular video. Of course, equally well, you could have typed in this code by hand or generated it from some other tool. But however you get hold of this code, an agent consists of a class that extends UVM agent. UVM agent is one of a number of classes in UVM that represents the various flavor of components. So later on in this video, I'll also show you a UVM driver and a UVM monitor component. Every UVM component class, as well as extending one of the standard base classes, is going to contain this macro, UVM component utils. A component will also typically have interfaces to the outside world, that is, anything outside of the component. And interfaces can be of one of two kinds. They can either be transaction level interfaces, as you can see here, this analysis port, for sending or receiving outgoing or incoming transactions across the boundary of the component. Or they can be pin level interfaces. And a pin level interface takes the form of a system Verilog virtual interface. We'll see some virtual interfaces later on in this video. Then a component would typically contain some variables, otherwise known as class properties, that are references to the various components instantiated by this component. So here we have references to the configuration object, sequencer driver and monitor. And then there's a number of methods. So first we have the constructor, then the build phase and connect phase methods, and finally, a method getIsActive that's used to decide whether the agent is being run in active or passive mode. I'll say what that means in a minute. This code actually comes out of the code generator, so we don't need to worry too much about the details because it's being generated for us. If you're not using the easier UVM code generator, if you're creating this code from scratch, you've got to be very careful to get a number of things right. You've got to make sure that you do use the UVM component utils macro. You've got to make sure that the argument to the macro is the same as the class name. You've got to make sure that you do have a constructor with exactly two arguments with exactly these types and names. And you've got to make sure that each of your phase methods is a void function that takes a single argument named phase of type UVM phase. Of course, one of the beauties of using a code generator is that the code generator generates all of this code automatically for you. Everything shown on this slide is boilerplate code. It's always the same, except for the parts of these names that are shaded blue. The blue colored parts of the names were actually sucked in from the interface template file for this agent. So clock and data agent is the name of this particular agent and the clock and data part is going to vary from agent to agent according to the information that we put in the interface template file. Now let's take a look at the build phase and the connect phase methods themselves. And what I'm going to say here is going to apply to pretty much any UVM component. Here's the build phase method for our agent. So as you can see, the build phase method for the agent is going to create or instantiate the monitor, the driver and the sequencer. And it does that by calling the create method. In easier UVM, whenever you instantiate a transaction, a sequence or a component, you should be sure to always call the create method, otherwise known as the factory method. Using the factory method to instantiate things, that is the create method, gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to reuse the, reu reusing your UVM code. I'll explain that more in more detail in another video. Anyway, in this particular case, we're creating our monitor, driver and sequencer. The monitor is always being instantiated and an agent that only has a monitor is being used in passive mode. The agent isn't gen generating any stimulus, it's merely monitoring what's happening on the interface to the design under test. If get is active returns UVM active on the other hand, then we're also instantiating the sequencer and driver, that is the agent is being run in active mode. 
So if an agent is being run in active mode, we'll run sequences on the sequencer to generate transactions. The driver will pull down those transactions through this transaction level interface, wiggle pins on the design under test. The monitor will then monitor the pins on the design under test, whether the agent is active or passive, assemble those pin wiggles into transactions, and then send them out through the analysis port to the rest of the verification environment. So that's the build phase method. Now for connect phase. So connect phase is being used to connect ports to exports. So there are two connections here. First of all, we have the connection between the analysis port on the monitor and the analysis port on the agent, which is being done by this line of code. Then if and only if our agent is in active mode, we're also making connections that involve the sequencer and the driver. So this line is connecting the port on the driver to the export on the sequencer, again using the connect method. And we're connecting up the pin level interface to the design under test. The important thing to take in here is that we have a method with a standard name here, the connect phase method, and it's within the connect phase method that we make connections between the ports and the exports on our component. And because connect phase is only executed after the build phase is complete, we know that all of the components and ports involved have already been instantiated by this stage. Actually, it turns out that the build phase is executed top down, and the connect phase, and indeed all the remaining phase methods, are executed bottom up, starting out at the bottom of the UVM component hierarchy. Now let's take a look at a run phase method. Well, it turns out that the agent itself doesn't need a run phase method, but the monitor and the driver certainly do. So here's the run phase task of our UVM driver component. So the run phase task contains a forever loop. The forever loop gets the next transaction from the sequencer through this port on the driver. And it calls a do drive method to actually do the work of wiggling the pins on the dot, and then calls sequence item port dot item done to show that it's finished. So the basic operation of a driver is to get the next transaction from the sequencer, wiggle the pins on the design under test, and tell the sequencer that it's done with that transaction. Again, all the code showed on the slide here comes directly out of the code generator. It's the same for every driver. The only thing that need be different between one driver and the next is the name of the class, this part in blue, that was steered from the interface template file. The actual operation of the driver, the details of the pin wiggling, will vary very significantly from driver to driver because that will depend on the particular protocol that's being used to communicate with design under test. And that's all implemented by the do drive function. So whereas this is all boilerplate code from the code generator, the details of the do drive function have to be provided by the user as a code fragment in an include file. So the code that comes out of the easier UVM code generator is a mixture of standard boilerplate code and user defined code fragments. Do drive is an example of one of those user defined code fragments. So let's take a look at that. The code fragment is defined in an include file, clock and data do drive.sv, within the include directory that we identified from the common template file. And driver inc is one of the settings that you provide in the interface template file. So within the interface template file, we're instructing the code generator to include some code from this include file. The inline flag here on our driver ink setting is telling the code generator to inline that code within the generated code. So the code within the box here is actually being inlined as part of the generated code. If you didn't put the inline flag on the setting, what would happen by default is that you would see an include directive here within the system Verilog code, that is backtick include. But because of the inline flag, we've actually inlined the user-defined code, code fragment. These comments will actually appear within the generated code, so when you open up the generated code, you can see where user-defined code fragments have been inlined. And you can see here the path of the, where the user-defined code fragment came from. And the code in blue here is actually being provided by the user. 
So each time the do drive method is called, it's taking a field from our transaction object, using that to wiggle a pin in the interface to the design under test, and then waiting until the next clock edge. So that was one example of a run phase method. For another example of a run phase method, let's take a look at the monitor component. So the monitor component is yet another standard UVM component. All UVM components study follow pretty much the same coding pattern. And if you're using the easy UVM code generator, this code is always generated automatically. So we have a class here that extends UVM monitor. We're making use of the UVM component utils macro. The monitor has a pin level interface, that is a virtual interface that's going to point to the interface to the design under test. And the monitor also has a transaction level interface, this analysis port, that it's going to use to send transactions upstream for analysis. Then, within the class, we've got some standard methods. There's the constructor with the usual arguments, the run phase method, and a do mon method that again has to be user defined. So all of the code here is boilerplate code, apart from the parts shown in blue. Clock and data is the name of the specific interface. Data TX is the name of the specific transaction class that's being sent through these ports. Do mon is a method that needs to be user defined because it's the protocol specific behavior of the monitor. So let's take a look at that. So here in the run phase of our monitor, we're creating a new transaction and calling the doMon method. We then have our setting in the interface template file. The monitor ink setting names the include file that contains the implementation of doMon, which is going to be inlined in this case. And here is the inlined user-defined code. So this code fragment in blue, which was user-defined, was included from this file located from the interface template file and that's now being included in our monitor code. So as we come to the end of this video, let's step back a little bit and take a look at the big picture. So in UVM, we have a module-based world and a class-based world. Our design under test, of course, is a system Verilog module. The system Verilog interfaces, which are output from the code generator, are connected to the interfaces on the design under test. And together, these two things are instantiated within a system Verilog test harness module, which also comes from the code generator. Then we have the class-based world, which if you're using the code generator is going to consist of a mixture of generated code and user-defined code fragments. So our top level component will be a test. The test instantiates the environment. The environment will instantiate a number of agents, subscribers, and possibly nested environments. There'll be configuration objects associated with each agent and also associated with the top level environment. And all of these UVM components are being created during the build phase. Then during the connect phase, all the transaction level connections between the UVM components are made. And also we may be creating pin level connections using virtual interfaces between the monitors and drivers and the system Verilog interfaces that contain variables representing the pins of the design under test. Then in the run phase, starting from the top, we run sequences and those sequences generate transactions. So you can see here the driver pulling down transactions from the sequences running on the sequencer, the driver wiggling pins on the duct, the monitor monitoring those pin wiggles, generating transactions that are sent off to the subscribers for coverage collection and checking. So you can get hold of the easier UVM coding guidelines and code generator yourself from this URL. At Doulos, we deliver training classes. And if you want to know any more about the training classes that we deliver at Doulos, do visit our website, www.doulos.com. There you can read about the classes that we run in hardware design, embedded systems, ARM processors, System C, and hardware verification.